airborne images are now a common source of data in environmental sciences. In the case of river environments, the aerial view, here acquired from a drone, gives us a wealth of information on the forms and processes at work. In order to be useful, images need to be classified. Dr. One is identifying the areas of water, vegetation, and sediment. This is the process of data labeling. This label data can be fed into a machine learning algorithm, such as maximum likelihood. This doesn't always work. Older algorithms, like maximum likelihood, often fail to deal with the high levels of detail present in modern airborne imagery. In this case, the machine learning algorithm completely failed to identify the water. Let's look to deep learning methods to improve things. It all starts with a convolutional neural network. Convolutional neural networks, CNNs for short, produce classifications in tiles, so they have a blocky appearance. But here we can see that the quality of the CNN classification is much better than the maximum likelihood. If we want to get the pixel level classification that is the accepted standard in all branches of Earth observation, then we can use this CNN output in another neural network a multi-layer perceptron, and get a classification result for each pixel in the original image. The multi-layer perceptron classification shown has in fact taken the output of the CNN as training data in order to learn the classification rules specific to that single image. This is the main idea behind self-supervised classification. Let's teach a CNN to perform a first classification of the image and use this to replace the human phase of training and label production. By using the CNN to label each image and train a specialized multi-layer perceptron, we can improve the quality of airborne image classifications. Let's try self-supervised classification for a large number of images. First, we need to train a CNN, 
and then we can classify the set of images. Here we see the results for a set of 1100 image classifications as violin plots. The two different violins show the outcomes when using two similar CNN models, NAS Net Large and NAS Net Mobile. Each plot is a distribution of F1 classification scores. The violins are split in half, showing the success of the first CNN stage and the second MLP stage. The dotted lines give the upper and lower quartiles, and the dashed lines give the medians. These results are very strong, and given the high level of automation, they can't be matched by traditional classification methods like maximum likelihood. If we look at the specific results for one river, and we produce violin plots for each class, we can see that results are impressive for most classes. The multilayer perceptron phase does have problems with the sediment class. This is caused by an effect called class imbalance, and research is ongoing in an attempt to solve this problem. Overall, these results tell us that deep learning methods, like self-supervised classification, are going to radically reduce the amount of labor we need in order to classify airborne imagery from drones and other aircraft. Unfortunately, it would seem as though Dr. Wan and his colleagues might lose their jobs to a higher form of AI. <laughs>